here. Thank you for tuning in. And today I want to do a follow-up to that canister tips video that I released a couple days ago and just show you how the canister actually turned out. It's uh, it was put together. I had to cut those those large sponges that I that I talked about in the video and fit them into the baskets. And I want to show you how that turned out. And I'll be doing it uh, right here, impromptu, sort of uh, in without really a lot of uh, tables or props. I'm just going to go ahead and open it up and show it to you. This monster. <laughs> it's like a for Star Wars fans. It's like an R2 unit. So. <clears throat> At any rate, it is loaded up now uh, the way I want it to be loaded. We'll reverse engineer it and to show you what's inside. Again, assuming I can do this while filming. There we go. So the O-ring, if you can see the O-ring on here. Let me go ahead and put this down so I can show you this one part. The O-ring runs right here. You see it right where my finger is? That's the O-ring. And if you saw that first video, you know that I've lubricated that O-ring. I inspected it because this filter was sitting in storage for a little while. So I inspected it and saw that there were no cracks, no flat spots. So I think that O-ring is in good shape. I always keep a spare O-ring. So I have a, a couple of them in a drawer. Uh, should I, I have a leak from, from the top. This is the, the place where they, if, if the canister is going to leak, it's going to leak from here. Sometimes it'll leak at the connection points of the hoses, right? Like 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 after you put on the uh, the hose assembly on the top, right where the hoses screw down, you'll have a leak. And that's because it's just not, either the hoses were not cut nice and clean and straight. Uh, maybe they're a little jagged or they're not really battened down. They're not really tightened down enough, okay? So... At any rate, that was lubricated. This was cleaned up uh, and, and, and seated correctly. This is, of course, the, uh, the impeller. The impeller is in real good shape. And it was, I made sure that it, it's, it's seated exactly where it's supposed to be in the right holes. And, and this, this snap on top is placed down exactly where it's supposed to be. You'll see some guide some guides and then turned and until you feel very convinced that it's on right there that that is about that's exactly what it's supposed to be if that's not right your canister is going to rattle and you're going to you're going to write on the you know you're going to you're going to write down somewhere on the internet that that sun suns uh sun suns suck and they don't they're 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 pretty good canister filters but you have to set them up right i'm not using the uv light i'm not using the uv light i uh so there's no light inside, only the, the the case, the glass case. And again, what I did is I lubricated the the rings on the light. I lubricated those 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 rubber those little rubber O rings, those little orangey O rings. And so that's going to be a little sealed compartment. But I don't use the uh, UV light, so I'm not bothering bothering with it but just be sure you those o-rings really do keep the water and moisture out of that because there is an electrical connection there and and you have to be of course careful with this unit because if you bang this and break it uh you've got a problem now you've got it now you've got to go search for a replacement on the internet and it's not it's not going to be that easy so <clears throat> this is the button that turns the uh the uv on or off and it lights up so if you see it lit just hit it once, and that way you'll know it's not trying to light a light that's not there. So <laughs> let's get let's go inside of this canister. So we're gonna go backwards. I'm gonna show you the top tray first. <clears throat> of course, you have this little shield on the top, and I want you to notice that this is it's all rock solid. There's no there's no movement here. It's all rock solid because I didn't overstuff the baskets. If you overstuff the baskets and they're not sitting right, you're going to get a rattle. And then you're going to you're going to post that sun sun suck. <laughs> they don't suck <laughs> if they're set up right. So, we take off the top take off the top screen and on the top here just for the heck of it. 
I've got some of these uh, Sarah polishing, these little polishing balls from Sarah. You can see I just kind of put them in there just to catch, catch a little bit of, of the detritus before, you know, just to do a little last polishing. Now, that's stuff, anything that might've gotten through all the sponges below, very unlikely that anything's gonna get through. But if it does, at least it can get caught by these, these guys. Now, underneath that, what do we have? We have Matrix. This is Matrix, some of that Seachem Matrix, which is uh, apparently a, uh, a good quality pumice of some kind. So, so here is the last thing water touches before it goes back to the tank. It's gonna get one last little polish. Now, some of you are gonna say, well, gee, shouldn't the last polish be before your, your biomedia? The water's getting a lot of filtration with a coarse, medium, and fine sponge before it gets to the bio. All this is, is one last added thing, just for the heck of it, just to give you that extra little polish, all right? Now, if you wanna put something that polishes underneath this tray that requires you to then disassemble and pull out trays to swap out because it will become clogged up relatively quickly because of the, uh, just how fine it is, that's up to you. You can do that, that's your call. Also, if I'm gonna use chemical filtration, which I'm not gonna use because these are mature tanks. I don't use activated charcoal, pyrogen, uh, chemipure. I don't use any of that on, uh, on mature tanks. But if you are using chemical filtration, this is where I would put it. I'd have it be the last thing that water touches before it goes back to the tank. And uh, if you wanna know the reasoning for that, uh, take a look at some of the Pond Guru Hemp My Filter series. He talks about the impact of resin-based and uh, chemical filtration on beneficial bacteria so and on that kind of media. So this is the top tray. This is the top tray. It's the last tray the water hits before it goes back to the tank because that's how sun suns are set up. The water travels to the bottom and then is pulled up by the motor or pump and then returned to the tank. All right, middle tray. These are those trays, these are those big giant blocky sponges. You can watch that other video I put out uh, to see them. They're just big giant, uh, like triple long bricks of uh, sponge that was left over from an order I put in with Swiss Tropicals. You can look up Swiss Tropicals on the net. They make a very, very high quality sponge. They've been around for a while. Uh, they know what they're doing, but this, this is uh, the fine, the finer sponge material. And I just cut it to the height and notice that this sits all the way down. It's not above the rim because if it's above the rim, if media is pushing it above the rim, the, the basket on top of it isn't gonna sit right. So here's your, uh, here's your fine, fine sponge. Here's some medium sponge. Now, keep in mind, these sponges are not coated by color. You can order pretty much any, you know, PPI, any, 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 any kind of sponge in any color from Swiss Tropicals. So I don't want to see any comments like, hey man, black is usually medium or uh, that ready orange one, that's, that's fine. It, the color isn't what codes it. You can order any, any porosity, any, any, uh, coarseness level in any color. So this one just happens to be this color. It's a medium and you can see I stuffed in pieces and uh, made it pretty tight in there. So, and again, it's lower than the top. This big hole here, that's where the uh, UV light, that's where the UV light lives. So that's where that glass canister is, but that's where the water travels down. So the theory is that it travels down along the UV light and then the UV light uh, is supposed to kill off, uh, you know, spores, virus spores, bacteria, and clarify the tank. 
I haven't found it to do much because the water is moving so quickly and the UV light is like nine, nine watts. So it doesn't do much. So I don't use this at all, okay? But this is where the water travels down. Bottom tray is the coarse sponge. And as again, you can see I've cut up the pieces and build up the build it up. And so now I have the water traveling to the bottom, stirring around, and then coming up through coarse, medium, fine, and then hitting a little bit of bio media. I was just gonna use this filter only. For mechanical filtration i was going to be all sponges all the way through but i got a hold of some of that secam matrix so i figured yeah i got it might as well use it now the very bottom if you can see here in the very bottom of this uh of this canister i have some rings that are laid nice and smooth that's based on a tip from pond guru again check out his pimp my canister filter series and those rings are are down there just to catch big chunks. How many big chunks of stuff am I gonna get? Not sure because I'm gonna be putting a pre-filter, a medium coarse sponge over the intake of the sun sun. But chances are that uh, the big, big nasty pieces are gonna get stuck to that. And over time, they'll get broken down and dissolve into finer particles and then go in. But just in case there's a little bit of uh, rings at the bottom, in case anything does get through that's bigger than I want it to be. Now, my last step on this whole process before putting it onto the, the 200 gallon tank, 210 gallon South American tank behind me, where I had a um, I had an FX6 on that tank, I moved it to the 300. This is a 300 gallon, seven foot across, 33 inches front to back, 25 tall, uh, the 300 gallon tank with a with a fluval fx6 with a pre-filter on it because of that pre-filter pulverizing anything that, that gets stuck to it and only allowing it through when it gets into small particles i don't have to work on that on that fx6 except maybe once every nine months to a year and it stays in pretty good shape it's not letting a lot of big gunk get in there plus again i've said this before any food that that would normally get sucked into the filter and wasted is sticking to the outside of the sponge, the pre-filter, and the fish come around, they peck it off. If you're curious, that sponge was acquired from the Aquarium Co-op. I believe it's their uh, large pre-filter, called the large pre-filter. I took the normal basket, the grill off the bottom of the FX6 intake. I drilled some holes in the pipe, and then I slipped the, I slipped the sponge over it. It works. My last step is I'm getting some of these, but probably twice the length. These were cut down to fit the uh, tank that I was running it on in California. So I've ordered uh, longer hoses that I will then cut down to size. Just be sure that when you cut the hoses, it's a clean, straight cut. Do as good a job as you can. Garden shears, the kind of things you use to cut branches, those work pretty good. Uh, I guess you could use something like a, a saw if you had one, but uh, be sure you do a clean cut and be sure you tighten, be sure you tighten this down really, really well at every, at every juncture or you're going to get um, a very slow leak and it's going to drive you crazy. Then the whole thing is going to go under the, under the cabinet and it's going to go inside of this Rubbermaid, inside this Rubbermaid container sitting on a pad that will absorb vibration. And this is gonna give me an absolutely quiet canister, okay? Because it's sitting on a, a pad that's gonna absorb vibration. Uh, just a little pro tip for you. If your hoses are touching the cabinet, you could end up with a buzz, hum, or vibration. So be sure that your hoses, as they come out from under the cabinet and up to the tank, be sure they're not laying against anything that could create vibration. Just something I've seen over the years. Then in the bottom of the uh, container, I'm gonna put my watchdog. And that has a couple little electrode, a couple sensors. And if you get some moisture, 
leaking from the uh, canister, it's going to it's going to complete the circuit on those two electrodes, and you're going to have a very loud alarm go off. I might be able to test it. I've got a little bit of water in the bottom of the canister. Let's see here how loud. The <laughs> Let's see how loud it is. All right, let me go clean the blood out of my ears. All right, so that will tell you that something is wrong in the fish room. <laughs> All right, there's the update on the canister. I suspect I'll have it on the 210, uh, the 210 that's behind me here, that 210 gallon uh, South American tank. And it's gonna give me, uh, it's gonna give me two things. It's gonna give me, uh, both water movement, surface tension breakup, which is always a good thing, and it's going to give me additional water polishing uh, and really back up that sump that's on there. There's a, a, a sump underneath with a, uh, she say, I think it's a 9.0 pump that's moving at 2,500 gallons of water an hour. Of course, it loses a little bit of pressure uh, with you know the head pressure. It loses a little bit of that, but the back of that that canister is going to help to just really keep that water really crisp and really clean which if you, if you look at the tank right now you'd say well gee that's already really crisp and clean but you know i always like it as absolutely clean as it can be so any questions tips ideas comment below and i hope to see you on saturday for cichlids and coffee and that's a live stream we do every saturday on the channel at 11 a.m central Tune in. Great group of fish keepers there. Stop by the Facebook group, Ben O apostrophe Cichlid. That's the Facebook group. Again, a great group of fish keepers. No trolls allowed. Come on by. You'll get some good tips. Follow on Instagram, ben.o.cichlid. And if you want to support the channel, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe. Hit the bell. And last but not least, if you really want to support the channel, become a monthly Patreon a subscriber or a supporter and look for that logo and also see in the description under the video you'll see the details on how to become a patreon i have a great group of uh, patreons currently these are the founding patreon members currently and uh, just a great group of people that support the channel all right that's it for me my friends thank you so much for tuning in you are the best and I hope to see you on Saturday for the live stream. All right? Thank you. And that's it for me. Bye-bye.